everything I've listened to. And I'm a music fan. As I sit here in my studio on my computer, I've got my all of my CD collection in iTunes, which is about 150 gigs of music, and there's more coming. And I listen to that music, and all the songs and records that are in that massive collection are part of my life, and I've listened to, and they've all influenced me. Everything from the West Coast Pop Art Experimental Band of Paul Horn to uh, Soulfly to... Uh, you know, newer bands, As I Lay Dying, tons of King's X, everything by the Beatles, everything by the Beach Boys, all over the map. Sinatra, uh, Anthony Newley, all kinds of stuff. Classical, Debussy, Ravel, uh, 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 you name it, in every genre. Not much country western though. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so I'm the sum of all that. And uh, so as a result, I'm not snooty and uh, stuck up about, it's got to be this kind of music only and I hate everything else. I like a lot of stuff. I really truly like it. So when I play it reflects that. A lot of guys think right away what they hear by and instantly just want to shred over everything. It's, it's, it's not what I do. I like to shred. I like to play fast stuff but I also like to play basic bass, great sing-along stuff, uh, great chordal things, all over the map. You know, but I, my, my basics are heavy metal and heavy rock. Uh, that's what my most of my foundation of my playing is, so I guess that's the best way to describe it. But but it's tainted with uh, everything you would imagine. So for somebody that was into that wanted to know about my playing, I, I'm uh, if a music fan could play, that's probably what I am. It's a long, long list of influences. Uh, I started out listening, uh, I had older brothers and sisters, so they listened to music that I was too young to really get into because I didn't know any better. So I heard Everly Brothers, um, uh, Jerry Lee Lewis, the precursors to rock, then the Beatles came out. I was still a little young for that, but I saw what was going on. The Beatles were huge, and then as I got a little older, I got in all the Beatles, Stones, Yardbirds, I was heavily into Yardbirds way early on, all three of the guitarists, Beck, uh, Clapton, and Page. Uh, the whole psychedelic era when it came out, when it first started, and the Beatles did Sgt. Pepper, you know, the first Vanilla Fudge record, and then things grew from that. I kind of followed along, that's why I'm glad, I'm an old man, but I'm glad I'm as old as I am, because I kind of followed along the, from the early days of rock and roll, even though I was a little young for it, because I, like I said, older brothers and sisters, the right up to the Beatles and Stones, and then the Bowie and the psychedelic era, and Hend you know, before that Hendrix, and just everything that came along as the most popular music of the day, at one point or another, I was into, right up until pretty much till the disco era, and then then things started to split. A schism happened, you know, and it became. It used to be, you know, rock, you know, folk and blues and classical. And then all these things started to split up. It became like the balkanization of music. So even in spite of that, I still was into a lot of different things. But uh, Sinatra. When I was young, I didn't like it because my mom liked it. I had to rebel against my mom. But later on, I became a huge Sinatra fan. Uh, all kinds of stuff. So, uh, as a fan, it, it, it is just almost too much to mention. You know, there's so much stuff that I that I love, all over the map. Fusion, when, when uh, Chick Corea, Return of Forever, Mahavishnu uh, Orchestra, John McLaughlin, Dreams, Billy Cobham's first band, all that stuff was way into that when it first came out. Because the first wave of it in the early 70s was it was amazing. Uh, I've been lucky to play with a lot of great players. Back in Buffalo, New York, my first band, Opus One, we had a horn band. Great musicians in that band. There were 11 of us. After that, I studied with Talos. Great players. They're still back in Buffalo. I go do jams and, and uh, reunions with them still. We have a great time. We, we can walk, right now we can walk into a club and do three hours of music without rehearsing at all. It's, it's an amazing phenomenon. And then went on with David Lee Roth, of course with uh, Steve Vai and uh, Greg Bissonette, uh, Brett Toggle on keyboards. Left that, started Mr. Big, got lucky again with some great players. Actually, before Mr. Big, I was going to do a band with Steve Stevens, who's another spectacular guitar player. Didn't, didn't quite come together, but so I, I did Mr. Big. All the guys Mr. Big, uh, supreme talent. Uh, from that, uh, Nias and Dennis Chambers, who changed my life, the greatest drummer. He's Hendrix to me, only on drums. You know, he's just was such a big influence to me. John DeVille on keyboards, great stuff. So I've been real lucky to play with a lot of great, great, tremendous players 
all of them had left their mark on me and all of it positive. These some of the people that maybe emotionally or business-wise, whatever, we had some conflicts with in the bands. It was still, in the end, it's all good because you all get something from it. It's all good. And even some of the people I've had some conflicts with, we've made some great music. You know, so in spite of it all, it all came through.